protest that's not about violence, that's not about disruption. I'm Fazila Farouk from the South African Civil Society Information Service. I'm here around the corner from the Johannesburg Stock Exchange at the Occupy Johannesburg March. People in South Africa, in Johannesburg, Cape Town, Durban, East London and Grahamstown have responded to a global call to action today, the 15th of October, World Revolution Day. They take their inspiration from the Occupy Wall Street pro protests in New York. We're here today to talk to some of the people at the Occupy protest march to hear why they have joined this global movement against economic inequality. I'm here with Dion Yubei, who is the person that has organized the Occupy website in South Africa. Hi Dion, tell us uh, why you organized uh, the Occupy website and how you got involved with the whole uh, movement in the first place. A friend and I, we were watching um, on YouTube and on Facebook in general, the Occupy Wall Street movement going on. And um, then we just came to a conclusion that we should do something here in South Africa too. Um, although we have different issues, a lot of it is the same all over the planet. Uh, so then we wanted to do something next year from maybe Youth Day, 16 June. Uh, and then we saw suddenly that there's a day decided worldwide, um, being 15 October, Worldwide Revolution Day. And the date was kind of then decided for us. And we said, well, it's 10 days. Let's put up the website. Let's see what happens. So what you've done has happened in the last 10 days only? In the last 10 days, yes. Um, people were excited. They said, no, no, push it earlier, push the date earlier. And then when it culminated, when we saw the 15th of October, we just knew it's the correct day to do it. My name is Vishwa Satka. I'm a, a member of the National Convening Committee of the Democratic Left Front. Why are you here today at the Occupy protest in Johannesburg? Well, basically, for the past three decades, uh, there's been an imposition of a, a, a model of development, if you were to call it that. It's all about recreating the world in the image of transnational capital uh, and markets. Now, this hasn't worked. And in the course of three decades, people have been rising up against this because of the costs that come with this. Uh, we've seen what's happened in Latin America, we've seen what's happened in the Arab Spring, we've seen what's happened in Spain and Greece, now in New York. Um, so there's a wave of mass struggle against this and for us this is a crucial moment. Um, so today is an expression of solidarity with those that have come out in the streets of New York for the past few weeks. But more than that, it's, it's to deepen this wave of mass protest. What's the message that South Africa uh, would like to send out to the world today? Well, the kind of neoliberal, market-centered, transnational, corporation-centered model has not worked for South Africans. We have uh, obscene unemployment levels, inequality levels, deepening relative and absolute poverty. Uh, our post-apartheid transition has produced a society that's not viable. And essentially, we want to, to, to register that in the public conversation. But more importantly, we want to say there are answers and there are alternatives. Uh, as the democratic left, we are putting forward a couple of propositions. The one is around climate jobs. Uh, climate jobs really, is, uh, for us, addresses two fundamental issues. The social injustice that goes with unemployment and ecological injustice that goes with the climate crisis. Secondly, we are talking about the solidarity economy. Uh, which is grounded in a whole host of counter values to what we have. Solidarity, cooperation, um, compassion. And thirdly, uh, we are talking about employment guarantee opportunities for South Africans. In India, they've created 45 million employment guarantees. What that means in the end is that we've got to move away from managing risk to capital at the center of our development approach and, 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 and direction. We've got to look at issues around the risk to people and the risk to nature. I'm here this morning to support my daughter. She's a second year student at WITS and they've just started an organization called WASO which stands for the World Active Students Organization. I've been very instrumental in assisting the group with uh, their 
profile and stuff like that, you know. So it's of great interest for me to be here, <laughs> to actually see what their plight is and, and what, their, what they sort of campaigning for towards this uh, COP17. Because uh, I am aware of the injustices, I am aware of climate change. I do support and subscribe to, you know, not destroying the environment and it, it is crucial. And for me, I think if more people got involved and, you know, really took an interest as to what our future is going to be, you know, the threat to, our, to, to the environment right now is so dramatic and we just tend to be turning a blind eye. I think we'll only wake up when, for instance, we know that Joburg is just about to be flooded. We hear this every day, but we're doing nothing about it. We're in solidarity with student movements across the world in the occupations of um, the strongholds of capitalism. Uh, we're here to protest, to occupy the space against capitalism, against the greed that's causing the poverty and the distress in our society, yeah, against the historical um, injustice towards our people, towards young people, and the injustices that are being perpetuated by capitalism that's hiding behind our, our government, our, our state, etc. Things need to change. The current situation, we can see it's not working. I mean, you've got one percent of the people sitting with all of the wealth, and it really needs to be distributed. I think that we've got far more than enough sort of resources around to take care of everyone. So it's just about how it is distributed. So people should stop pocketing it and share it. I personally feel that we should show some form of unity with the rest of the world. Uh, and in particular, a country like South Africa, where our disparities are that much huger than many other places in the world that are occupying at the moment. We in South Africa, particularly the middle class, have not been vocal enough in trying to express how we feel about the situation. We meet among friends and we moan and we gripe and we complain, but we don't really do anything about it. And today in itself won't be life-altering. But stemming from this, I think that we could uh, garner enough people to write our petitions, to write to our legislatures, to uh, enact some changes. We're here today to protest against the current monetary system. Um, we're a loose group that's been organized protests all over the world. There are 800 cities today protesting the same thing all around the world. How did you get involved in the protest action? Um, I've been involved in the Zeitgeist movement for some time now. So the idea of the, the flawed monetary system, I've been following that for some time. So when Occupy Wall Street um, happened, I was really excited. And when, um, when they announced the October 15th um, date for the global protests, I said I was going to be there. I was going to be there to, to make things change. And what do you do when you're not protesting? Um, I'm an IT consultant. <laughs> if you see all our service delivery protests are mostly against the government. But the people who are really benefiting from the policies of the government are the rich, are the big corporations, and the American, and, and those big companies. That's why we are here today. Yeah. What are your uh, hopes for the further continuation of the movement in South Africa? Okay, I hope that uh, people can be more clear what is the source of the problem. Because the economic crisis is not only in South Africa, it's everywhere in the world. And everywhere in the world, the rich are getting richer, the poor are getting poorer. Why? Because the industrialists, the bankers, the investment bankers are monopolizing all the wealth. So I have hope that ordinary people are beginning to see that. They are beginning to demand that governments must have a wealth tax, must take back the wealth. But now, with the occupation of JSE stock exchange, it means we are now going directly to the enemy, to the real culprits, which is the bosses. The media has been quite cynical about the, the movement and the protest here in South Africa, labeling it anarchist, ut utopian, idealist. What's your response to that? Okay, it's far from being anarchist and uh, utopian. Okay, it might be anarchist because we've got some anarch anarchists, you know, uh, organized anarchists. But utopian, I don't think so. People are fighting for basics. They're fighting for water, they're fighting for electricity, they're fighting for housing, 
they're fighting for quality health care you know they're fighting for education so that is not utopian i think those are what i can call basic human rights that's what everyone must get and it's not some university professor or left-wing Trotskis or someone in a corner it's ordinary working class poor south africans in the townships in the ghettos in the shanty towns in the informal settlements you know in the sheds who are fighting so i think it's a genuine people's movement